Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I don't have my lucky hat on, that thing's being clean. On the last video I noticed that it was getting kind of skanky. This is the final bits of the videos where we took a kid's toothbrush, modified it into a master to make a mold for soft plastic swim baits, and then poured a bunch of soft plastic swim baits. Now, if you haven't seen those two videos, I'll go ahead and put links at the very end of the video. So I know I left some loose ends. I had some folks ask about the swim action of the lure and I did run out of time and the weather wasn't the greatest to try to do any underwater video. The water quality in the lake right now is pretty crappy from all the rain. So underwater shots, we'll have to wait for another day, but it's good enough right now to get down to the dock and just show you what it looks like from the surface. But there was one other loose end and that was what the ultimate judgment would be on the product test for this sort of off-brand silicone. Now it set really well, it has a very low viscosity so it pours out really smooth and doesn't hold bubbles at all. But the question remained at the end of that last video on whether it was platinum cure or tin cure and whether that was the issue that I was having with the silicone sort of dissolving the clay I was using and staying gooey. Now my theory is that this stuff is platinum cure and if that's the case then I have to have sulfur free clay and I went ahead and ordered some. I got these two slabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lump of this stuff and make a little pocket and pour some of the silicone in it and let it set and we'll see then if it works well with the sulfur free clay. If it does then, then this really is a, a real good value. So let's go ahead and get down to the dock. I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll get out on the water and see if I can catch something. No promises. All right guys, so I had so many people ask me why I hadn't actually shown this lure in the water and really it was mostly my uh, lack of time and the weather wasn't exactly the best. Sorry about the dog barking in the background. You see it has a nice tail waggle. It swims pretty nice and straight. No tendency to spiral or anything. A little heavier action wouldn't have been bad. Anyway, it's supposed to get a little nicer out this afternoon just before dark so I'm gonna give it a shot and try to do a little sundown session and I'll get a little footage. Give it a shot with this unweighted hook and see if we can just slow roll it back. So I like the swim action. The swim action is a little bit subdued probably would like it a little, uh, I don't know, more energetic, I guess. But I've got some ideas for some alterations to the, uh, the master because I'm not super happy with that mold. So I'm probably gonna make a new mold anyway. So I'm gonna make some changes, try to get a, a heavier action on that tail. All right, I'm gonna use this one now. This one's a little orangier and it has a weighted hook a little deeper in the water by these little lily pad islands. Oh yeah, we got something. Oh, stay on baby. Did he come off? Oh, is he swimming toward me? Oh, he's swimming toward me. Oh, he came off. Son of a, son of a sailor. Oh, that was a nice bass too. The slope right here is gonna protect the hook tip. So I'm just gonna leave the tip uh, not buried. All right, so let's go ahead and get straight to doing some improvements, some modifications to my original design. And let's just forget that I didn't catch anything out there. I did hook one though. So if you'll remember on the original design, I cut these little slots here on the back hump of this modified toothbrush. Remember, we're working with a toothbrush and I cut those slots so that I could enhance the movement of this tail. I was hoping with, for a lot more of a swim action, but I really didn't think it through. Let me explain what I'm talking about. That is supposed to look like this. And imagine these are the slots I cut into the blank to give it that added freedom of movement. But what I sort of glossed over was that for this tail to be effective, it has to stay pretty much at a pretty good angle to the water flow. Because if it starts to straighten out going this way, either at the tip or by flexing upwards, you actually lose 
the tendency for that tail to want to flop around. And the real movement is side to side and not up and down. So that was kind of a knucklehead move on my part. I should have kind of thought that through. So the design parameters that we have to improve here are one, the tendency for this boot tail to not straighten out and want to stay as true to this angle as possible. Now it's always going to flex up. And the other thing is I want to have flexibility in the sideways movement. So instead of top down groove, I, I need to cut side grooves. The other thing I want to do is to add a gusset to the boot tail and that gusset should help fix that angle and keep it a little more rigid so I get a more dynamic movement. What I'm gonna do is take the one toothbrush I have left and go ahead and do all these modifications sort of in a quick fast motion montage. So here we go, it shouldn't take more than a minute. All right, so one last little modification I wanna do. What I noticed was, even though this curve right here makes a perfect spot to hide the hook, if you embed the hook tip a little bit, it tends to wanna to stay in there and not pop out when you try to set the hook. So what I wanna do is put a little slot right here for the hook, just a shallow slot that the hook can set in. And we'll do that right about center line, about that long. All right, we've got it shaped, got the slot for the hook, the grooves to loosen up the sideways action, and of course, that big gusset for the tail. And I'm hoping this is really gonna give us a more aggressive swim action on this thing. So the next step is to make a mold, but before I do that, I wanna do the clay test with this silicone and this molding clay. This is sulfur free, and I think it will solve our problem, I hope. So I'm gonna make a little cup out of this and I'm not gonna make my mold until I know this clay is gonna work. And I'm gonna put links to everything I'm using in the description and I've been doing that as much as possible. And I'll just remind you guys that uh, a lot of those links are Amazon affiliate links and that just means that if you click on that link and you, you end up buying something, a few pennies go to the channel to help support all this experimentation. All right, I'm gonna make a cup and then we're gonna mix this stuff up and pour it in the cup. All right, here's our cup and here's part A and part B of the silicone. And while there's almost no instructions on this uh, silicone that does tell you to mix by weight, but I did do the test where I poured the same amount of each A and B into uh, the cups and they both weigh exactly the same. So that means you can mix either by weight or by volume, which really makes this stuff super handy. And it's just a matter of mixing this stuff up for a few minutes. All right, now it's just a matter of letting this thing set up. Once I'm sure this uh, silicone is gonna work with this clay, then we'll go ahead and do the mold. <laughs> All right, so we waited enough time. Uh, I kept this space super warm with the little area heater and it's like 85 degrees in here, I'm dying. It seems to have set up nice and firm. All right, just open this thing up. And it's still gooey. Oh no. I guess that means I can't really recommend this silicone for anything but a one part pour. So maybe that's what we need to do. Let's see how that comes out. When you're a designer maker and things start to go sideways in the middle of a build, you can't throw your hands up uh, or fall in love with your original design too much. You gotta adapt. So that's what we're doing. And hopefully this works. So I'm using the little pieces of PVC board that I used on my original uh, mold box. 
and I'm gonna fasten this lure down to this piece of board so it'll be my base. I'm using a cutoff piece of, little, of a little bolt. I'm gonna screw down in there. And then this little assembly I've put together, which is nothing more than a piece of a dowel, a small piece of eighth inch solder, and this little tiny plastic piece that was a spacer somewhere for something. And then it'll become fastened uh, more completely with a little bit of hot glue. All right, I've already glued in the position of the lure itself. And now I need to put the box together. And I've already done the, four, the two corners and they just need to go together like so. Got to work kind of fast. That should form a decent little mold. Now I just need to position it on the square that I already drew out on this piece of wood. And I know the corner that I want towards the bottom of the lure because that's going to be important after I demold it. It's in there. Now I just need to measure the inside uh, dimension so I can get the volume and pour it up to probably about, oh, probably a quarter inch above the tail. Somewhere around there. 16 by four and a half by four and a half centimeters, that is. So it's 324 cubic centimeters, but I think that 24 cubic centimeters can probably be accounted for by the volume of the body of the lure and the wooden dowel and that other stuff. So I'm going to pour 150 milliliters of each A and B. Let's get to it. So there's 100 milliliters. That's about all I have left of this initial bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and use this first and then I'll pour another 100 milliliters of the next box that I have. And then we stir. And as usual, this is going to take like five minutes. The reason I marked the corner of uh, that plastic outside mold is because when I open it up and get out the silicone mold, I'm going to cut the mold in half along that bottom line. And I probably won't cut it all the way around. I'll just cut it around one side and the bottom just so I can release uh, the lure when I actually make one. All right, let's go. All right, it looks like uh, we need uh, an extra 100 milliliters or so. All right, and away we go. The last bit of the pour. I may have mixed a little too much, but I don't feel like doing another mix. Yep, just a bit much. Not too much though. Probably mixed an extra 10 milliliters. All right, so now it's just a matter of letting this set up and praying that my seal job works and this stuff doesn't just leak all over my counter. That would be disastrous. All right, new day, and this thing is definitely still here. I'm impressed, no leaks. So in case you guys were thinking I was joking about this alphabet soup uh, silicone that has absolutely no information, the only thing that comes in the box is this little instruction manual, I guess, and it just has very rudimentary instructions. But take a look at the box you can tell there's something missing. First, there's no additional instruction. There's no warnings. It doesn't tell you not to eat it. It doesn't tell you not to feed it to your children. All the things that, you know, we need here in, in the US. Let's go ahead and yank this thing off. I'm hoping I can just pull it off this wood base. All right. We should be able to lift it straight up. Now comes the question of how to open this thing. Now I can do a full cut all the way around and turn it into a two part mold, but really I think my best bet is to do sort of a three quarter cut. So I'm gonna cut so that I can reveal the boot of the lure and then up this corner and right all the way to the sprue, trying to make a jagged cut. So to get this thing cut open, I'm gonna use a brand new scalpel Let's start. I know where the uh, end of the little boot is and it's right here. So I'm going to start about three quarters of the way across. I'm going to go straight down in there and then I'm going to make some jagged cuts.
and there's our master so before I actually do pour I gotta cut some vents in this thing so what I'm gonna do is just put dots along the cut line this way when I open it I have a mark on either side and I can just take the razor knife and cut a little bit of material out and it doesn't take much that little tiny bit is all you need I think we're ready so let's go ahead I'm gonna heat up some plastics and let's do our first one I like to give it four minutes stir it every 30 seconds don't walk away from this because it does make a burning smoking mess all right so after the last 30 seconds I'll give it a stir and I like to stick it in the little mini oven at about 300 degrees this way the bubbles come out all right here goes nothing first pour All right, let's go ahead and open this thing and see what it looks like. So far, so good. That looks pretty good. Really see a lot more swinging on this thing. So it's definitely loosened up. And the eyes came out pretty nice. The little slot looks pretty good. All right, well, it's not absolutely perfect, and that's mostly because the way the uh, mold went back together and I think I clamped it just a little too tight but it looks pretty good and that works out pretty nice the hook sets right in that slot all right I'm gonna go ahead and pour a couple of more maybe use some lighter colors and then we'll go down to the water and try fishing these guys down at the dock. I have high hopes for this. Let me give it a shot. Oh, big difference. Let's go ahead and get out on the boat. And even though it's pretty much overcast, I'm going to try to get some good uh, underwater shots. If not, I'll get a decent shot from above and we'll do a before and after. Here's the original design. You can see it's got a pretty nice wiggle in the tail, but the rest of the body doesn't move much compared to this this is the new one and you can see the movement is in the whole body the tail moves and the head moves and there's a wiggle and kind of a roll to it too all right it's windy and overcast I'm gonna go ahead and start fishing and if the Sun comes back out I'll go ahead and get some better underwater shots but hang with me let's see if we catch something Well, no fish, but how about some underwater shots? Well, I went all the way around the lake 
and nothing. A couple little bumps, but I doubt it was anything that I wanted to catch anyway. And I threw all three colors. I have to say, I've got to make more of these uh, ghost green colors. I think we'll do really well out on the flats for a redfish. Anyway, thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you've got any ideas for future videos, share them in the comment. All right, I'll see you next Friday.